Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amy Kanata. And I'm Ashley. Ashley, what are we going to be talking about today? <laughs> We're going to talk about how you can tell the difference between a meniscal tear and an ACL tear at home. Uh, before we get started, maybe uh, the folks want to know what is a meniscus and what is an ACL? Well, your ACL is a ligament in your knee and your meniscus is the cartilage between uh, the, two jo or the two bones in your knee at the joint. How can you tell the difference without using any tests between a meniscal tear and a ACL tear? Oh, that's a great question. And honestly, the initial uh, diagnosis actually comes down to how did your knee start hurting? Was there a traumatic event? Did you slip and fall? Were you playing sports? Were you playing basketball? Were you playing soccer? Were you planted your foot and turned? Did you hear a pop? Typically, when you hear a pop, it means something tore. So part of it is your history. How did you do it? Was it traumatic or did it gradually come on? Typically, with ligament tears, you'll have a traumatic event. You'll twist, you'll pop, you'll be playing sports, you'll be hiking, you'll hear that pop, you'll feel that pain, and your knee will start to swell. With a meniscal injury, it's more, it can be more gradual and you can get tiny tears over time due to wear and tear. Those will come on more gradually. There won't be a specific event that happened to you. And those are just some basic questions to ask yourself. How did it happen? Did, was there an event or did it happen over time? So if you're sitting there with knee pain and you're wondering, is it a ligament tear or is it my meniscus? When you have a ligament tear, you will experience quite a bit of swelling within the first 24 to 48 hours after the injury. That's one way to tell. The other way to tell is that you'll feel like your knee is going to give out on you. You'll have this feeling like your knee is going to give out. Especially when you go upstairs, you'll feel like it's going to give out. And downstairs, it's going to feel like it's going to give out. With a meniscal injury, you won't necessarily have um, swelling all the time. It'll come on gradually. Your symptoms of knee pain will start to hurt, but it will lock up. You'll get in certain positions where you're bending your knee and it will lock up on you and you'll have to kind of play around with it to get it to unlock and, and be able to straighten it out and bend it and move it again. That's usually the sign that you've got uh, some kind of meniscal injury. Ashley, what are some tests that the folks at home can do to figure out on their own whether they have a meniscal injury or an ACL tear? So there's Lockman's test, the anterior drawer test, and McMurray's test. So if you want to, hit pause, go grab a pen and piece of paper because we're going to show you those tests right now. So for today's video, um, we're just going to be showing one side, but typically when you're doing these exams, you want to check the, the side that is not painful first so you can get an idea of what the normal anatomy sort of feels like um, on the non-painful side. So we're just doing the painful side today, um, which is Ashley's left knee. So um, we're just going to be testing the one side just for, for time's sake. But when you're doing this at home, make sure you check the good side or the non-painful side as well. The first test we're going to show you is called Lachman's test. And that is to really just show you if you have an anterior cruciate ligament injury. So what you're going to do is you're going to start by placing one hand on the, on the patient's thigh. So Ashley, I'm going to put one hand here. So this is just to stabilize the, the thigh bone, also known as the femur. And then you're going to use your, th use your thumb to find the bony uh, this kind of bony part right here in this lower leg bone, it's right at the top, just below the kneecap, you'll find it. That's the top of the tibia, which is the lower leg bone. You're going to use your thumb, you're going to place your thumb on that bone, and then you're going to use your fingers, and you're going to pull up on the lower leg bone while you stabilize the upper leg bone. So you're just going to pull up. She's got a nice solid end feel. Like her ACL is keeping her lower leg from really sliding and gliding up towards me. So she's got great, great uh, anterior cruciate ligament. So the next test we're gonna show you folks at home is called the anterior drawer test or the anterior drawer sign. It's known by both names, it doesn't really matter. Um, the knee is actually going to be flexed to 90 degrees, basically, you'll see here. Foot is flat on the floor and straight, or flat on the bench, whatever you're using to do this test. So what you're going to do, you're going to place your hands around the calf, just at that bony part that we found in, the, in Lachman's test. You're gonna place your thumbs here and you're just gonna pull the lower leg bone forward. 
That's it. And again, Ashley's got some nice end feel. It stops. I can't pull her knee any more towards me, which is a negative test. So she, good news is she doesn't have an ACL tear. So what I like to do um, with patients is actually stabilize the foot and ankle with my other knee, just applying just some gentle pressure on the top of the foot. You don't want to crush someone's foot, but you're just going to apply some gentle pressure. This really helps to take the foot and ankle movement out of this test and really help you focus on just pulling this lower leg bone forward. Last but not least is McMurray's test. The really cool thing about this test is that it is accurate within 1% of an MRI. So it's, it's fairly accurate in terms of diagnosing medial and lateral meniscal tears. So to perform this test, what you're going to do is you're going to lift the leg on the painful side. You're gonna to wanna to place your palm of your hand on the heel, resting the, the foot on your forearm, just like this. Using your other hand, you're gonna to wanna to fully flex the knee. You're gonna to wanna to turn the foot out. This is gonna be testing the outside meniscus or the lateral meniscus. You're gonna straighten the knee while you apply some pressure to that side of the knee. So you can see I'm applying some pressure there as I straighten the knee out. Now positive test, it'll thunk It'll pop, it'll click, you'll feel it as you're doing this test. Good news for Ashley, her lateral meniscus is fine. So to perform the, to check the medial side or this inside, what you're going to want to do is turn your, the foot in. Now again, you can do this one of two ways. You can use your hand and arm. I actually prefer to use my hand like this. You're going to want to turn the foot in towards the big toe. You're going to want to fully flex and you're going to want to apply some outward pressure using my fingers and you're going to want to straighten her knee and you want to do this just a couple times. So I'm applying pressure in this direction as I straighten her knee and this is checking the inner meniscus or the medial meniscus. And good news for Ashley, her medial meniscus is fine as well. I don't hear any clicking or popping or, th or thunking. So those are the three tests that you can do at home to figure out uh, if you have an anterior cruciate ligament tear or whether you have a torn cartilage. Again, you don't want to do these tests to replace an actual um, diagnosis. You still want to go ahead and get those tests done. This is, again, just something that it can tell you which direction to go when you're at home. Uh, whenever you're performing these tests at home, you want to make sure that you do the side that is not painful first. That gives you an idea of what a normal, the normal side feels like and looks like and, and feels like to the patient. For time purposes today, we're just going to do one side. We did the, a, a painful side, and, um, but when you're performing these at home, make sure that you do both sides. Thank you.